Good evening and welcome tonight. It's nice to have everybody back in person for this and here to see everything. Uh, my name is Megan Chappie. I am one of the new assistant principals at the high school, but I am also the assistant principal for the seniors with the last names A through K. Um, this is Mr. Taylor. I'm going to let him introduce himself and then tell you a little bit about what you can expect tonight. Thank you, Mr. Shafi. So again, I'm Nick Taylor, the assistant principal for the seniors L through Z. Mrs. Shafi again is the uh, seniors A through K. So welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. Tonight will be a, a really informative um, night for you in terms of the college application process. We're gonna be going over some critical information that many of you need to know as you are guiding your sons and daughters through the college application process. Um, for many of you, or, or rather for some of you, this is gonna be your first go around with the seniors, so tonight will be really helpful to, to give you the information that you need and the comfort in knowing that you know, we're gonna help you along the way. And for some of you who this isn't your first time, we're gonna be providing some updated information from the past, so it'll help you even better, although you do have the experience. So we'll enhance that for you. Um, tonight we're gonna to be hearing from our home office counselors, as well as the, the interim future planning center um, coordinator. So uh, that Brendan uh, Turner is our future interim future planning coordinator. So he's the person who many of your questions um, about the college application process, uh, he'll be able to help you uh, along these next coming months. We're gonna hear from uh, Mr. Brian Daly. He's the counselor for students P through Z. We're gonna hear from Ms. Judy McGurman. She's um, students, um, what are your students again? I'm sorry. A to G, I apologize about that. And then we'll hear from um, Ms. Bianca Adams. She's students A through, no, no, I'm sorry, H through O, okay? Um, this is gonna be just an information night, so, at the end of tonight's presentation, we will save some time to address general questions. If you have more specific questions, we ask that you hold off on that and just reach out to your respective counselor with specific questions. So again, we're gonna be providing you a lot of information within this hour. At the end, we will just address any clarifying information about what's being presented. If you have more specific questions, you can reach out to your respective counselor or Brandon Turner. Also, I'd be remiss if we didn't recognize that we're really trying to dedicate this graduation year to uh, a dear friend and, and colleague and a very important member of the North Penn community for the last 15 years. Dr. Mary Scott unfortunately passed away from cancer in May and she loved everything about North Penn and she was most excited about having yet another senior class. So we ask that uh, you, know, you keep her and her family in your thoughts and prayers and we're gonna have a great year in her honor. All right, so without further ado, we'll hear from Mr. Brian Daly, who will go over, um, give you a brief walkthrough of today, excuse me, tonight's agenda, and then we'll hear from everyone else. All right, thank you again for coming. All right, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, Brian Daly, school counselor in the 12th grade home office, last letters P through Z. I appreciate everybody coming out this evening. So when, st when students left us in the spring, we were encouraging them to continue the exploration process, to continue exploring colleges, uh, hopefully visiting some colleges, so that when they come back to us in the fall here, they have a handful of colleges that they're seriously considering submitting some applications to. So that's really the point of tonight. We're starting to switch gears from the exploration process to the actual application process. And it can be pretty overwhelming, so we're gonna kind of break things down here and explain it bit by bit. Uh, as we do this, one of the things we wanna continuously stress and one of the things that the colleges have continually stressed is the importance of the student taking ownership in this process. The student should very much be in the driver's seat. And colleges have consistently told us 
They, they really don't want to hear from the parents. They want to hear from the students. So as Mr. Taylor said, uh, there's going to be plenty of support here with the counseling staff and the Future Plan Center and our administration. We certainly expect that parents are going to be help guiding students through the process, but it's very important that the student is taking ownership and in the driver's seat for this process. So this is kind of an overview of the topics that we're going to be covering this evening. Um, some of these things you might be familiar with or comfortable with. Um, some things might be totally new to you. So hopefully by the time you leave here this evening, you've got a pretty good understanding of all the things that are up there on the slide behind me. So again, where should we be as we, we're coming into the fall of senior year? Again, we're hoping that students had the opportunity to research and visit colleges. And we realize that this year that had some unique challenges um, given to us by the pandemic. Having just gone through it with, with one of my children, I can certainly speak to that firsthand. But researching and visiting colleges and, and being in communication with colleges is incredibly important, uh, especially as things are kind of continuing to shift on us. This really speaks to demonstrated interest in a college, which is really becoming more and more important in the college admission process. So we hope that people have had the opportunity to research colleges online, to visit colleges, virtual visits, that sort of thing. And we hope that students are coming back to us with a handful of colleges. So we usually see about four to seven colleges on average. We certainly have students who apply to way more than that. We have students who apply to way less than that. I can tell you, much to my chagrin, my own two children each applied to one college, which I appreciated from a financial standpoint because they only had to pay one college application fee. But on the back end, there was a lot more stress and anxiety in other areas because we only had one iron in the fire there. So hopefully they, they have that list of schools that would include at least two safety schools, meaning schools that you are confident that you're aligned with their admission criteria. And hopefully they're in the process of getting their letters of recommendation together. So again, just, just to reiterate for our students, the proper etiquette for getting letters of recommendations from teachers or people outside of school is to first have contact and communication with them, whether that's in person or by way of a formal email, and then to list that recommender in Naviance. You don't want the recommender or your teacher to see the recommendation on Naviance first. The proper etiquette is to have some sort of contact with them Ideally in person, but just given the flow of the school day, or maybe it's a teacher that you don't have anymore, uh, a properly worded formal email would also suffice. It's important that you continue to have discussions and frank discussions about the cost of college. I think everybody here knows that this is not an inexpensive endeavor. Um, so I think it's important to continue those conversations and talk about how you're going to pay for this, how you're going to get through the next four, maybe more years, and what that's going to look like on the back end. Does that mean student loans or things that the parents are, are taking on? And lastly, um, this would be a good time to sign up for the SAT or ACT. I think we really have two more SAT opportunities here for the seniors. One would be in October. Unfortunately, right now you'd be looking at a late application for that testing, or there's also a November sitting if needed. So as I'm looking out here, I'm seeing a lot of people kind of nodding along saying, yeah, we did that, we did that, I'm comfortable with that. I'm seeing some other people that are a little wide-eyed, saying we're not quite there yet. Um, maybe we realize everyone's at different places in the process. So a question that we often get in September of senior year is, is it too late? And the answer to that is certainly no. And you have a lot of resources 
here with the counseling staff and the administration. Uh, you're going to hear about a lot of colleges that are coming to visit us in the, in the near future, virtually and uh, in person. But it's not too late, but you certainly cannot drag your feet. You cannot procrastinate. Because as you're going to hear, a lot of these deadlines are quickly, quickly approaching. And there's a lot of information out there to be processed. So the sooner you can start absorbing that, soaking it in and making heads or tails of it, the better off this is, this is going to go. So I think everybody, certainly the seniors, should be well acquainted with Navians. Uh, our students have used that in middle school and into 10th grade. Uh, at those levels, it was largely for self-discovery with the interest inventories and the strengths explorers. Last year, it kind of switched more toward the resume builder and the college exploration process. And we're going to continue using Naviance all the way through here. And that's what's really going to manage your college applications as well as scholarship opportunities. So, and my colleagues here are going to go through this kind of point by point, but you're going to be using Naviance specifically to list the, the colleges to which you have applied. That's what's going to let us know that you've applied to the college and we're going to be starting to the process of recommendations and transcripts, et cetera. You're going to be requesting transcripts through Naviance. You're going to be requesting teachers' letters of recommendations through Naviance. You're going to view and sign up for a lot of the college visits that are coming. And again, this kind of keeps changing on us. As of last week, they were all virtual. As of this morning, there was an opportunity for some of them to be in person. We'll certainly keep an eye on numbers uh, of cases in our, in our community um, and, and pivot, as they say, as we need. And again, lastly, uh, a little bit further in the process and ongoing through the spring is going to be the opportunity to look for scholarships. So I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Brandon Turner, who's going to go a lot more into detail with Navians. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Uh, hello, everyone. I am taking over for Mr. Brett as he is out uh, in the College and Career Center, or formerly College and Career Center, now Future Planning Center. Uh, so please, if you have questions, uh, you are definitely welcome to email students, stop in K31 sometime. Uh, I'd love to help you guys in however I can. Uh, all right, so first thing I'm going to go over here is just the Naviance login screen. This is for students. Uh, so this is exactly what your screen should look like. Uh, obviously, it'll say welcome, and then that would be your name there where that box is. All right, this should look familiar to you. This is something you guys should have been using for the last couple years. Um, you can see different sections there, different information. Uh, things at the top like self-discovery, careers, colleges. For the sake of college applications, we are going to be mostly using that colleges uh, tab at the top and then in those favorites where it says uh, colleges I'm thinking about and colleges I'm applying to. This is actually the bottom of that same welcome screen. Uh, so we put this on here just so you can see some of the things that will come across your Naviance account. Uh, you can see there, there are to-do tasks. That is something that Mr. Brett set up last year for us. Uh, it is a career speaker series. Definitely a great way to get information on careers if you are still interested and if you're still looking. Uh, there are various speakers from this community and communities all around. Um, and it is accessible right there in that bottom important uh, to-do task. You can also see there what's new. Uh, so as Mr. Daly said, we have been able to get some college rep visits scheduled. These are actually the first three that are scheduled for us. Um, so if I was interested in seeing the rep from Boston University when they came in, what I would do is go to 
that Navion screen, uh, select more info under the Boston University uh, tab there, and that'll take you to where you can register uh, for the meeting, okay? It'll have where the meeting will be, or if it is a virtual meeting, it will have um, a Zoom link so that you can Zoom in. The meetings do take place during school. Uh, for the most part, they will be in K31, but definitely something that we encourage. Get out, get to see some of the reps of schools that you're interested in if you have not. Um, it goes a long way with schools. The more interest you show in them, the more likely they are, the more willing they are uh, when it comes to acceptance time to uh, look positively on your application. All right, so we're back to that top screen here, and this is where we really get into the process of the application. Uh, the first thing you guys will do as far as applying to these colleges is in Naviance, make sure we're going to that colleges I'm applying to section. Okay, you can see it there, it's on the home screen. Once we go there, you want to add any schools that you are interested in. There is a search tab there. If you've already added schools to the colleges I'm thinking about tab, which is another tab, you can actually see it's there as well. You can move those schools directly to colleges I'm applying to uh, by just clicking on them and selecting the option. All right, so in the colleges I'm applying to section, this is what it will look like. Uh, you can see here that we have a couple schools that are up there. So. First, you want to make sure we get our schools there, and then you can see a couple things that we'd like to point out. First thing is submission type. So submission type is going to be up to you as a student uh, on how you are applying. There are various types, applying through the Common App, applying direct to the institution, uh, applying via mail-in letters or mail-in applications, which we don't see as much anymore, but some schools still do. Uh, I know Georgetown is one specifically. So when you are applying, what you guys need to know, okay, what are the schools I want to apply to, and how do I want to apply? If I'm applying Common App, I want to make sure that my submission type in there says CA. And you can see that little computer screen that says CA. That stands for Common App, okay? The screen without anything on it there uh, for Bloomsburg means direct to the institution. So that means you went on to the institution's website, you applied directly to them, and then you're telling us all we're doing is sending transcripts, okay? The symbol there with the CA with the line through it means that though you applied Common App, we are sending your application or you sent your application directly to them, okay? It is a small difference there. There are some other options in submission type. Most of you will go with Common App or Direct Institution. There will be some schools that specify how they want their application sent. This is where my suggestion is know what you're applying for and know how, right? So if you know that you want to go to Bloomsburg and Bloomsburg doesn't accept the Common App, then you have to know, okay, I'm applying direct to that institution. Uh, if you have questions, definitely reach out to us, but you can always email an admissions counselor at a school and ask if you, are, if you can't find that information. Their application should specify it for you, though. So you should see in an application on their website, we accept the Common App, we accept direct to institution. The beauty of the Common App, and I, we haven't completely went into this yet, is that it is an application that is kind of one size fits all. There are at least 100 schools that accept the Common App. So by filling that application out once, you can then send it to multiple schools that accept the Common application. Uh, it does link with Naviance, and it is kind of how we recommend for most of our schools to apply. Uh, so you can see kind of, oh, one other thing there, we have your rolling uh, type of admissions, and you have uh, RD, which would be your rolling decisions, a uh, regular decision, and then there will be some more that we will get into as far as the type of admissions that each school will take. And I'm going to pass to Mr. Taylor quickly for FERPA and then come back. 
All right, so FERPA, the long and short of FERPA is that each student and their parents, especially if they're under the age of 18, have a right to see their academic and social records in an educational institution. And also that that right is protected. Um, there's strict privacy with regards to who educational institutions can make privy your um, students' academic and, and social records. And so for the college application process, what's important to understand about FERPA, there's two main things. One, we highly encourage that you waive your FERPA rights in the, uh, during the college application process, especially when it comes to um, the teacher recommendations. Now, the reason why that that bodes better, that you're waiving it, is because if you don't, it's not that it's necessarily a red flag for the prospective colleges that your son and daughters are applying to, but it does it could draw some concerns from that institution as to why the student didn't, felt that um, they didn't want to waive their, their FERPA rights. Um, additionally, when it comes to teacher recommendations, teachers who go to upload their recommendations in Common App can see that a student did not waive his or her or their FERPA rights. And so it may disrupt their comfort in submitting a letter of recommendation. Um, and so we don't necessarily want that to be the case. So that's why we highly recommend that when it comes to FERPA, just essentially waive um, the FERPA rights and allow for the institutions to see that you've done so and that the teacher recommendations were not viewed by you know, the student. Okay, and if you have any further questions about that, again, uh, Brandon Turner or any one of the, uh, or your son and daughter's um, school counselors will be able to provide further clarification on it. Thank you. All right, so the college application, uh, we're looking at the parts of the application here. So obviously you have your application in the traditional sense as what you are actually using to apply to that school, right? So that's where we talk about our Common App, we talk about the application that you can find uh, on the school's website. From there, your high school transcript is something that you will request from us. Uh, we actually put a video and a little tutorial out on how to do that. Uh, we are not able to send transcripts yet. We should be able to by September 20th. Okay, so your high school transcript will come from the school uh, and you will request that. Your test scores for SATs, uh, this is where it's important to know what school you're applying to and do they require test scores? Are test scores optional? Uh, this is where you can do some of your own re research or reach out to a school and find out, okay, if Penn State's test scores are optional, and my test score puts me right in that uh, ballpark of what they suggest for their admissions or to be admitted into Penn State. Uh, is it going to be beneficial to add it? So if, you're, if you know that the SAT score is going to help you, send it. If you don't think that it's going to help or if there's any chance that it's going to hurt and it's optional, then I think you have to have a real conversation about maybe we're not sending these SAT scores. Uh, that is something that's a little bit new this year and last year as schools have started to be more optional with SATs uh, kind of in the wake of COVID. So something to have on your minds there uh, as far as SAT scores, knowing whether they're optional at a school uh, and knowing if it benefits you to send them. Uh, definitely something that you can reach out to me or you can reach out to your counselors to discuss if you have questions. Uh, in that realm. So we also will send a school report. The school report basically is our way of telling schools, this is what you're seeing on our transcript. Uh, it has our, a breakdown of our GPAs. It has a breakdown of how many classes we offer at AP level, honors level. Um, it is nothing that students will really have to worry about. It is included by us when we send your transcripts uh, through this process. Uh, teacher and counselor recommendations, again, we're suggesting making sure that you have reached out to a teacher uh, and that you at least have two teachers who would recommend, uh, but it is 
I'm sorry. It is important to know that not every school accepts recommendations. Not every school wants them. Uh, so you may be applying to four schools, and they might not require any letters of recommendation. Uh, you might be applying to four, and they all might want them. So knowing the school and knowing what they want in that respect is very important. Uh, and it is easy to look up. They will tell you on their application and on their website. Uh, so just plan ahead, because know that your teachers are writing those recommendations. If they're getting them now, they're writing them during a full school year. Uh, so give them a couple weeks to work on them. Don't try to rush your teacher, uh, because that just puts all of us in a tough position. So plan ahead with this stuff. Um, other requirements, we love to see a resume. We love to see outside uh, letters of recommendations, your writing uh, or your college essay. All of those are definitely helpful and can be included in your college application. Different schools are going to ask for different things. So it's very important to, when you're looking at where you're applying, what do these schools want? What does Pitt want versus Penn State? Is there a difference or are they the same? Uh, the more that you know kind of before you start the process, uh, will kind of, will help everything go smoothly as you go through it. Um, and then you can see that applications are not free. So for the most part, that's why we're kind of saying five, seven schools is a good range. You know, you could be paying close to $50, $60 an app application. It's not really beneficial to apply to 20 schools. Um, so just putting that out there, we do have fee waivers available. Uh, and if you're interested or if you think you qualify for that, definitely contact me uh, and I will make sure we get you to the right spot there. All right, so common application. And we, I touched a little bit on this. You can see there's about three different kinds up there. The benefit to the Common App, as I was saying, and I think I uh, undersold it with 100, you can see 900 schools participate. Uh, so an awesome way to, I filled out one application, I filled out one essay, and now I can send this to as many schools as I kind of want, right? And any schools that accept that will take that same application where you don't have to do it multiple times, uh, it saves a ton of time up front, and it can save time where, say you don't get into your first two schools, and unfortunately, that can happen. If you've applied via the Common App, adding a school and sending that application out afterwards or later on in the process is very simple uh, because most of your legwork is already done. So, big thing, and uh, Mr. Taylor did kind of address this. Uh, address this. You can see on the Common App, you do have to make sure that it's matched. So matching the Common App with Naviance, where that becomes an issue for us is that FERPA waiver that Mr. Taylor was talking about. Whether you decide that you want to waive your FERPA rights or you're deciding that uh, you're not waiving them, you need to fill out and complete the waiver. Sometimes what we see happen is some of our folks that don't want to waive the rights don't complete the waiver and then we cannot actually finish the application process. So in order for us here to finish that, we need you to complete the FERPA waiver and match your account. Uh, and the only way you can do that is in that common app. Uh, by You finish that waiver, and then there will be a, an easy button where you can click, and it'll match your account with your Naviance. Uh, coalition application, you can see 90 participating schools. It is a little newer. Uh, than the Common App. It has been gaining some steam. Um, one thing that we need to know with the Coalition App, which is very important, is we need to know that you're applying that way. You need to designate that in Naviance or let a counselor know um, because it, isn't, it doesn't speak to Naviance the way that the Common App does. So it takes us a little more effort in making sure we get your transcripts to the right place. Okay, so if you're looking Coalition app, um, I'm sorry, this TV is flashing in front of me. It's distracting. Um, if you're looking at that coalition app, definitely make sure that you're in touch with one of your counselors and that we know you're planning to apply that way. Uh, and then finally, you can see your individual college applications.
that's going to be kind of what we think of traditionally, where you go to a website, you find the application, uh, you fill it out, and you send it in direct to the institution. All right, quickly, what will we need for the application, or what will you need? Full name, social security number, mailing address, obviously. One thing that we want to highlight, an appropriate personal email. So we used to say a North Penn email might be the best thing to use. We're actually going away from that this year. Uh, the personal email just allows a little more flexibility for you in communicating with schools, or if you are communicating later on in the process, after you've graduated, you can still have access to any of those files or any communication that's gone back and forth between schools. Uh, so we recommend create an email address, students, that is professional, you know, first name, last name, maybe your favorite number at Gmail, Yahoo, whatever you use. Okay, we want to kind of get away from maybe some of the email addresses that we've had as uh, younger adults and that we use for personal things outside of kind of a business sense. You want your email to appear to colleges that you're serious about your applications in this process. Um, reminder, you have to use your full name as it appears on the North Penn transcript. Uh, just want to make sure everybody understands that. If we have issues with that, please reach out to a counselor or myself so we can start talking about how to rectify that as soon as possible uh, so that when you're ready to send transcripts, we are ready to send them out for you. All right, types of admissions. So this is one we get a lot of questions on. Uh, there are four main types of admissions. You can see rolling, uh, regular decision, early action, and early decision, okay? Rolling admissions means that there is no application deadline. Uh, it's just kind of first come, first serve. So the earlier you get in an application in a school that accepts rolling, the better. Because they are vetting those applications as they're receiving them, keep filling up spots for their school, and then as spots get less, uh, obviously the application process gets a little more difficult. So you want to be, you know, I know Penn State is one that has rolling admissions. If you're looking for Penn State and you're really serious about it, think about trying to get that application in as soon as possible so you're one of the first people to have it looked at or the first students in the country to have it looked at. Um, your regular decision is going to be a specific deadline. So this again comes down to you guys as students uh, knowing what your deadlines are. You know, some of these could be as early as November 1st. Some can be as late as, you know, March 30th. So knowing where you're applying and then what those deadlines are, some schools will offer multiple ones. So the schools that you are the most interested in, that you really are aiming for, try to get to those early decisions or try to get to those applications as early as possible, uh, just so that you are getting your information back as soon as you can. Um, early action. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go over early action and early decision in the same breath here. Your early action means that it is a specific deadline, it's usually an early deadline, uh, but it is a non-binding agreement, right? So if you're applying early action, you're applying to their early, they're going to review those applications early, but if you get accepted, you do not have to go to that school, right? So you can apply early action to more than one school because you're not forced to choose uh, that you are going there from that point. Early decision, on the other hand, has that spe specific deadline, but it does come with a binding agreement. So early decision is really for a school that you know, if I get in here, no matter what, no matter how much it costs, no matter what I want to do there, I am going. If you have any doubts in that area, if you apply early decision to Drexel, and I'm not sure if Drexel even has early decision, so I'm just using an example here. But if you were to apply early decision to Drexel, and you got accepted, and then you found out how much Drexel cost, and you had a hard time paying with that, that can be a difficult agreement to break. 
So we just want that to be out there. We want you guys to know. Uh, anytime you are choosing that early decision, we uh, as a counselor has to sign off on it. So it is definitely a discussion we want to have with you before we just say, okay, that's what we're doing. We want to make sure you understand why you're doing that and what the school uh, is going to be offering you. It is your responsibility to keep track of deadlines. That's, I'll say that on every slide because it is super important here. Uh, all right, when should I apply? We like to say complete as many apps as you can by Thanksgiving. The earlier you apply, the earlier you get these in, the earlier you either get accepted or you find out that maybe you have to look at other schools. So it gives you more flexibility as you go through the year. Uh, and there is an advantage to being one of the students who is applying early on in the process. While schools are really trying to fill their numbers and to take as many applicants that meet what they are looking for. Okay? Uh, and as we said, many colleges, you can see September 1 is kind of where applications will start. That is up there to really make sure you guys know you are not behind in this process. You know, if you have not sent an application out, that is okay. We are getting to that point. You have plenty of time. Most of your early decisions are still a month and a half away uh, at most, or at least. So take your time in this process, pay attention to your deadlines, and kind of make a plan as you go into the applications uh, and starting this. Make things smaller when this is such an overwhelming process at times. All right, uh, and you can see the last thing up there. I am available after school, uh, during lunches, during study halls, and if none of those work, we can really work on what would be a, a good appointment kind of in the day if we need. Uh, please stop in K31. If you have questions, send me an email, uh, and we're happy to help however we can. I am going to pass this to Mrs. McGurman. Hi, everybody. I'm going to talk about the transcript. And I feel like the transcript for me as a school counselor um, is the hot topic right now. Um, I'm getting dozens of requests, questions about the transcript. So I'm going to go through um, each area of the transcript and hopefully explain it to everybody and explain it to you guys if you want to get um, a transcript, um, you'll know where to get it to. So there's two types of transcripts. One is called an official transcript and one is called an unofficial transcript. So the official transcript, the only thing that that is used for is that comes directly from North Penn to the college that you're applying to. So that doesn't come through your hands at all. Um, but what most um, students and parents are looking for at this point is an unofficial transcript. And that is going to help you through the application process that Mr. Daly and Mr. Turner kind of talked about. But if you look up here, and, I, and I'll show you a bigger one here in a minute, this is a, a snapshot of your high school career, starting with ninth grade, um, your ninth grade um, transcript or courses is in the upper left hand corner. You'll see a list of all the classes that you took in ninth grade. The next column to the right will be the grade, the final grade that you received, and then the credit that you got in that third column. And then if you go down at the bottom, you'll see the credits you earned, the number of, and your GPA at the end of ninth grade. The same thing if you go over to the right would be your 10th grade. Same thing, the courses you took, the grades you got, the credits you received, and your GPA at the end of 10th grade. Then just drop it, dropping down to the bottom right, I'm sorry, bottom left would be 11th grade. And then off to the right there, the bottom left hand or right hand corner, would be the courses that you're currently enrolled in as a senior. And colleges are looking at that strictly to see the rigor that you're in and just 
the courses that you're taking here as a senior. If you look a little bit lower, and I'm gonna move, that's a little bit bigger, but if, whoop. so if we look at just that bottom section blown up there, is your weighted GPA, and that will be at the end of 11th grade. So it will be 9th, 10th, 11th grade calculation. So it's basically an average of those three years. The weighted GPA is out of a scale of 6.0. And what that does is that kind of gives you a little bit of bonus points for taking those AP or those honors level courses. The unweighted GPA is out of a is on a 4.0 scale. And the one thing that that colleges use that unweighted or that non-weighted, and they can kind of compare other high school students on that 4.0 level, because different high schools use a different grading level, if you will, for that, that GPA calculation. Your rank will also appear, and that is based on your weighted GPA. The other thing that's at the bottom will be your total number of credits, and your total number of credits are at the end of ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. So typically, an average load for a student is about 6.6 .6 to 6.9 credits. So at the 11th grade, at the end of 11th grade, you have somewhere around 20 credits. So the question is, why do I need a transcript or how do I request a transcript? The first thing I'm going to answer is requesting a transcript once you've gone into Naviance, you've come up with those five to seven schools that you're applying to. Now, I will tell the students, just an FYI, Mr. Turner sent you out like a little snapshot um, at the end of the school day to kind of click through some boxes to help you with that, that transcript request also. But there's two steps, and I want to make sure everybody understands the two steps. The first step is in Naviance that you're requesting. You're saying, hey, Mrs. McGurman, I need you to write me a recommendation letter. So that you're kind of requesting. But the second step is you're giving me permission to send it. And that is through the Google form that you were sent from Mr. Turner this afternoon. So step number one is through Naviance that you're clicking, you're saying, again, hey, Mrs. McGurman, I need you to write me a, um, a letter of recommendation. You're going to also, once you do that, there'll be another box that pops up there, and you're going to click on that initial transcript is what you want me to send. And it's really important that you have all those um, schools on there that you want me to send those transcripts to. And again, the second step is called a records release form or a counselor form. And that again is giving me permission to send them. I can't send them until you give me permission. Even if you request it through Naviance, you need to do both steps for me in order to send out those, those um, recommendations and the transcripts. Oh, I'm gonna go back here. Um, the other thing, and I know we mentioned it before, please keep in mind that last statement, 15 days to process. And I know Mr. Turner mentioned it several times, know your deadlines. If you're doing an early decision deadline November 1st, back it up. You need to give me 15 school days. That's October 9th. So please, please, please don't show up on my doorstep on Halloween, October 31st, and say, I need you to get me a transcript out to a college by November 1st. You might get a dirty look. Um, so again, please, that's the most important thing is know your deadlines. Don't get yourself out of the game before you're in it. 
the last thing that you will need, can we hold off till the end or is it something? Yes. Okay, and the last thing that you'll need a, 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 an unofficial transcript for, and you can get unofficial transcripts, and there's a couple of um, Mr. Turner's email up there, Mrs. Borchers, who is our transcript secretary, her um, email is up there. But the other thing that you might need that unofficial transcript for, and this is fairly new, and I'm gonna say fairly new because it's about five years old, is this SRAR, so you're self-reporting your academic record. And this, this list is growing, that the number of schools, like you can see some big names up there, Penn State, Pitt, um, you know, so this is growing day by day. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your unofficial transcript and you're literally gonna type it into the application. You took English 10, you got an A, you got, took social studies, you got a B plus. You're actually gonna type everything in and there's two different ways that you can do that. One is directly from the institution um, and the, um, so that is, that's becoming more popular. But understand, I also as your counselor need to know if you do that. So you need to put that in your Naviance area just to make sure that you are telling us at North Penn that you're doing this on your own. Because um, a lot of them, like for example, Mr. Turner mentioned like Penn State, they're test optional right now. So you could literally go to the SRAR and apply without us even knowing it. And we had many, many seniors last year that we got to the end of the year and we didn't send their final transcript because we didn't know you applied there. And the second way that you can do it is directly from their website. Um, and you can start this, I don't know if there's younger siblings, you can start this as early as ninth grade to start putting your classes into the SRAR website. And I am going to turn it over to Ms. Adams. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bianca Adams, and I am the counselor for students of the last name H through O. Um, so I'm gonna start off with talking about test scores. Um, how do you submit your test scores? This is not something that we do, and it's not something that is listed on your transcript. You must go to the testing website and have those scores set. That is something that you as a student need to do. So that's a key part of making sure that you're doing things on your part. Um, something that can be done through um, SAT and ACT is if you're registering for the SAT or ACT coming up, you can send your scores to four schools for free. Um, so that's free of charge, which is great. <laughs> um, after four schools, or if you s decide that you wanna send your scores after the testing date, there will be a fee for sending your scores. Um, here are some opportunities that we have to take the SAT or ACT. Um, if you haven't signed up yet, I would highly recommend that you sign up as soon as possible. Um, get yourself on the registration list, and you'll also be able to, at that time, uh, list four schools that you'd like to send your scores to for free. One second. I guess the stopped working on me here. Oh, I figured it out. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> so now begin uh, talking about letters of recommendation. Um, it's really important that you as a student are doing your background research on the colleges or universities that you're applying to. Because some schools might require two, whereas others might require three. And then there might be some who don't accept letters of recommendations at all, such as Penn State or Pitt. So it's really important that you're doing that background research on the colleges that you're applying to. 
Um, the common app will automatically require two letters of recommendation and then one counselor letter of recommendation. I just, okay. Uh, okay, great. So there is a difference in the process of requesting teacher letter of recommendations versus requesting counselor letter of recommendations. So I'm gonna start off with the teacher's letters of recommendation. Um, as Mr. Turner said earlier, maybe it was Mr. Daly, um, the first time your teacher that you're requesting the letter of recommendation from sees your request should not be via Naviance. Um, the proper way to request a letter of recommendation first would be to email in a formal email or speak with that teacher in person. Um, after that and after they agree to, let you, to write your letter of recommendation, then you could then proceed with requesting them on Naviance. Um, I know as, as a rising senior, you've probably had a lot of teachers at this point. So what teacher should you ask? You should ask a teacher that knows you well and that you did well in their class in. So someone who can speak to your academic ability and performance and someone that might know you a little bit outside of the classroom as well. And it's really important, one, one thing that I forgot is that um, you provide an academic resume. So if there is uh, any additional things that you'd want the teacher to know about you, you have that in your resume. All righty, requesting counselor letters of recommendation. This process is a little bit different. Um, so I know a lot of students often ask, do I need a counselor recommendation? Uh, some schools don't require a counselor uh, letter of recommendation. If you're applying through Common App, that is a requirement. Um, but if the school does not specify that you need a counselor letter of recommendation and you feel as though two teachers could uh, properly attest to you as a student, then maybe you want to go with those two teachers uh, as opposed to the counselor. If you feel like you've built a great relationship with your counselor and you'd still like that letter of recommendation, then we'll be more than happy to provide you with one. Um, so in this process, what you'll need to do is you'll need to complete um, the counselor request, letter of recommendation request form. Um, this will be a Google form that, again, was, uh, was emailed out earlier today. So even if you've already had a conversation with your counselor or you sent an email out to them, that's absolutely great. But also follow up. It's mandatory that you follow up with filling out that Google form. Also, providing your uh, resume to the proper counselor is important as well. And please be sure that you are um, requesting for the right counselor. Um, I, there are some students that I don't know, maybe in A through G or pre, P through Z, so I'd like to write them for the students that I know best. <laughs> Alrighty, the essay. Um, so some colleges don't require that you submit a writing sample or an essay. So again, I can't stress this enough. Making sure that you're doing your homework um, on whether or not an essay is required would be um, very important. When you write your essay, you will be given a prompt uh, by the college or by the Common App. And it's important that you choose a question that you can best answer while also providing information about you and how you're unique to other applicants. So you wanna make sure that when writing this essay, you personalize it, okay? And then I just wanna go backwards. I think I did miss one of the slides when I had a, a little mishap here, so I apologize. Okay, this is very important. This is something new in Naviance uh, this year. So I'm gonna go back to requesting letters of recommendation. Now you have the option of specifying certain teachers for certain colleges of letters of recommendation. So here you can see Millersville is allowing two letters of recommendation. You can see that Pitt is not accepting letters of recommendation. Now let's say hypothetically speaking, there was a third school in there that allows three letters of recommendation. But for Millersville, you know that you have two specific teachers that you want to write those letters of recommendation. You would hit specific request, 
and then you would add, you would have the teacher, select the teacher, hit specific request, and then check off the boxes of the college or university that you'd like that specific teacher to uh, write your letter of recommendation for. If you don't have a preference and you have the same two or three uh, teachers or teachers or community members writing the letters of recommendation for you, you can either hit general request or if you hit specific request, you can hit select all as well. And then make sure in that upper left hand, in that upper right hand corner, you're hitting submit request. Okay. All right. So the college application, um, here are some very important steps. And there were also steps that were sent to you via email. So it's important that you look at those steps and look, watch those videos. So the first thing here is filling out that records release form. We cannot send anything without this records release form. So that is the first critical step in completing the overall college application. <clears throat> Next, you would complete your college application, whether it be through the college website, through the Common App, or through the Coalition App. After that, you're gonna request your transcripts and your letters of recommendation in Naviance. The fourth step would be sending your scores either through, either through act.org or collegeboard.org. And then lastly would be doing your research on specific colleges, and reviewing those college websites for additional application requirements. And now I'm gonna give the phone to Mr. Turner. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Adams. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna go over a couple more things quickly as we wrap this up. Uh, first, NCAA athletics. Um, Couple important things here. Uh, first, know what the NCAA clearinghouse is. If you are interested in competing in a sport uh, at the Division I or the, the Division II level um, in college, you need to register with the NCAA clearinghouse. Um, the easiest way to get to that website is honestly just type it into Google. Uh, it will come up, it is the first thing that comes up when you search. And it is pretty self-explanatory from there. You need to be registered in order to be deemed eligible for NCAA competition at the end of this year, okay? So there are a few things that make up your NCAA GPA. Um, I'm not going to go into super specific detail, but know that there is a core GPA that you need to complete. So your NCAA GPA comes from the core classes that you take with us, that would be your math, your science, your social studies, and your English, all right? They take a combination of those classes, your GPA specific to those classes, uh, and then deem you eligible for the NCAA. Uh, the cutoff line or the general cutoff line is a 2.0 GPA, but it is a sliding scale. So what that means is that if you have a 2.0 GPA, but you have a 1,400 on your SATs, then you are totally fine. If you have a 1.8 GPA, but a 1,400 on your uh, SATs, you would be deemed eligible by the NCAA Eligibility Center. If you had a 1.8 GPA and your SATs were under 900, you would not be eligible. Okay, so those are things that we would, I would want to talk more specifically about. For the sake of this, I think the important takeaway here is make sure that you're registering for the NCAA uh, Eligibility Center. Make sure that you reach out to either myself or one of your counselors uh, if you have any intention of competing in a sport uh, at the college level, okay? As long as you do that, and do that as soon as possible, we can help you from there, okay? So we can make sure that we avoid at the end of the year any athletes that we did not know uh, were planning on competing in a sport, okay? You can see there is a small fee, um, and there is some different eligibility depending on Division I, Division II. Um, but like I said, 
if you're interested, make sure that your counselor knows, make sure that I know, and make sure that you are registering for that uh, NCAA eligibility center, all right? And I did see a couple girls track team members here. I'm very proud of you guys for being here. So you get a shameless uh, plug there. All right, a couple of dates that we have coming up uh, that we just want you to be aware of. You can see up there, back to school night uh, is set for September 23rd. FAFSA forms open on October 1st, okay? So that is when you can start uh, looking to complete FAFSA eligibility forms for this or for the next school year, the 22-23 college year, okay? Uh, you can see October 2nd, we have an SAT at North Penn. Uh, I believe we already had a slide there that was showing when our late registration deadline was. I believe it is September 21st, uh, and we do have spots available at North Penn. So if you have not signed up and you're trying to get one SAT in uh, before you really get into the college process, October 2nd would be the best date for you. Uh, FAFSA completion night. Uh, will be here on October 26th. Uh, that's a night where we bring in some professionals to really help you go over the FAFSA process uh, and to help you complete or get used to completing those forms. All right, and then you can see finally, we do have another SAT uh, on November 6th, though I would recommend for seniors in this situation, if you're really looking at an SAT still, you should really be thinking about that October 2nd date uh, so that you can get your scores back in a timely manner to get applications out. Meet with your college and career counselor. I guess that should say future planning center counselor. Uh, that would be me. I think I went over this uh, already a little bit, but like I said, study halls and lunches for students, uh, walk in, you can come in whenever you need. I can help you with applications in real time. Uh, I can answer Navion's questions in there in real time as well. I am available from at least 2.15 or from 2.15 to at least 3. Uh, some days I might be here later. I put 3 on there for the most part because I do coach a sport when we get into November, December. So that would be more of my deadline. Before Thanksgiving, if you want to stay until 3.30 or 4, be my guest. I'm happy to stay there and help you guys. Uh, just a heads up would be kind of nice in that situation if you think you're staying, staying late or you're planning on staying late. All right, my email is up there. It is my last name. Uh, and then my first initial, B as in Brandon, and M as in Nan. All right, at N10. That's not my middle name. And FAQs. You want? All right, so I'll go over FAQs really quick. <laughs> uh, I think we are getting towards kind of the end here. So just before we open up questions to everybody, some frequently asked questions, I think the biggest thing that we get here is our weighted scale is 6.0, okay? So you saw on there your general or your unweighted scale is always going to be a 4.0. Uh, most applications will ask for both, and they will ask what, your, what it is out of. So know that it is 6.0. It is actually possible to have a GPA above 6.0. If that is you, awesome. Uh, your scale is still 6.0, though, for the sake of our GPA terms. Um, all right, so weighted 4.0, okay? And I actually had to talk to Mr. Brett about this today. All right, so this is when schools take our weighted scale and they use their own conversion to convert it to what their kind of weighted 4.0 scale was. All right, it is a little different than that general scale uh, because each class is going to be weighed in a different way. I do have a link that I'm able to share if you need or that I'm able to go into with you to kind of estimate what this would be. I do want you to know that it will be different dependent on the school. Uh, the schools use a similar scale. There is not a universal version, though. So just something to be aware of. Uh, when can we fill out our FAFSA? I think we had it on that last slide, October 1st. Uh, CCS profile. 
All right, so this is a form for private schools uh, for financial aid. So it is kind of a, the private school version, I don't want to say of FAFSA, but it is a way for private schools to offer students more money. Uh, because private schools are restricted on the way that they can offer scholarships, grants, monies. Uh, so this form or the CCS profile exists for students who may be interested in a private school and want to see if they can get any more aid through that CCS profile. Um, what is PHEAA, Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Association? That is something that I'm going to be honest with you guys on. I would need to find more information on. <laughs> Didn't know I had this. All right, help me. Sorry. So I can help you out. I have had to do this twice for kids, so I feel your pain right now. Um, FIA is something that you can apply to Pennsylvania for grants and different things for. So it is like Pennsylvania's FAFSA form. Um, if you are looking at schools in this area, in the state, it is definitely something you're going to need to um, do at some point. So that's what that is. Um, and I think at this point, we're going to open it up to questions. Yeah, so just keep in mind that this whole process um, can be frustrating and overwhelming, but as long as you're utilizing the resources that we're providing for you, it's very manageable, especially for those parents who've already had students go through this. So the class of 2022 information page on Canvas, that is gonna be so key, and I believe uh, Mr. Shoppe and myself has sent several emails reminding you to check that, parents and students regularly check that. We have all kinds of important information for this senior year up there. In particular, we have a module that's dedicated to college applications. So this presentation will be uploaded on that, as well as a video that uh, Mr. Turner has put together on the, the steps. There's six essential steps for submitting um, college applications. That's uploaded there as well. So at any point throughout this process, make sure you're referencing that Canvas page to get information, but then more importantly, reaching out to Mr. Turner Ms. Adams, Ms. McGurman, Mr. Daly, as well as uh, Mrs. Borges, who is the transcript secretary. You're in good hands with this group, and we will definitely make this a very manageable process for you, okay? So we thank you for coming. We want to now open up the floor for just general questions. So if you have general questions about the information that was presented tonight, need anything clarified, we'd be more than happy to address that now. Again, if it's a specific question, we ask that you just go ahead and uh, reach out via email to your respective uh, counselor, Mrs. Borges or Mr. Turner.